Downtown Podcast. I am your host for this evening. I am Dylan Jorgensen, CTO at TickyCake.com. And to celebrate our 30th episode, we actually don't just have beer. We have chicken and beer. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> I love it. All right, so we have Matthew here. Tell me, what am I, what am I biting into here? What did you bring well, us? Well, what you're biting into there is actually what we're known for is our most famous mac and cheese. Mm. And it's absolutely <laughs> delicious. I gotta say there's a little bit of heaven in every bite. <laughs> I agree, I agree. So what else is on the menu? Um, well, we have, uh, what we're known for is our baked fried grilled concept is uh, baked strips, fried strips, and grilled strips. I guess what makes us different is having the baked and the grilled. Um, so it's a pretty simple menu, very, um, not, not complicated at all. Um, we have our mac and cheese, that's what we're famous for, along with the strips. Then we have our grilled vegetables, our french fries, and then um, I guess what makes us unique and uh, has, we have nine sauces to choose from. Seven of them we make in-house from our own ingredients. Okay. And uh, our wasabi cream is pretty popular. All right, so here's the address. You guys are on 873 South Rainbow Boulevard. Right. Um, and then this is stripanddipchicken.com to check out more. Thank you guys. Yeah, no, thank you for bringing it by. I really appreciate no it. Problem. It's always so good to have you guys for having us. He's born here, grew up here. It's exciting. We owned and operated. We do have to move on. So now we're going into the news section. And I wanted to get it started by talking about the sprinkler sprint. I mean, that thing has just been taking off. And last week, we asked everyone in the audience who's ran through sprinklers, and you should have seen the grins <laughs> on their faces. Everybody had. Yay. <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, no. so tell me more about it. Yeah, we're um, Downtown Runners, a new local running company. And we thought that Vegas needed an epic water fight. Yes. Thank so you. we thought about what... Um, we needed to do to bring the community together, so we thought, why not do a 5K and ho have water excursions throughout the entire course? I love it. So we, what we did was we created a really cool 5K, different from any other 5K course that's been used in downtown. We're shutting down part of Fremont Street and the Strip, and so what we're going to do is run through a misting tunnel, oh, so an Arctic cool. misting tunnel. We might be using some penguins, <laughs> <laughs> and then um, yeah, you shoot down Fremont Street and then you head toward the water cannon blaster. So we have a huge truck that's going to blast water. It's going to feel wow. like you're running through the torrential rainstorm. <laughs> And then uh, we shoot down and you go through um, a popsicle stop on the course, nice. which is different from most 5Ks. You don't normally get a refreshing treat. And then we have the vest zone, which is the super soaking squirt gun zone. So you're going to get blasted with super soakers as you run by. Oh, that's cool. So, and then the best part of all is there's a slip and slide finish line. That's what, that was my favorite. <laughs> I mentioned that when we covered the event of that. So awesome. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. So people bring their own squirt guns out? And try to yeah, get we're encouraging in yeah. it. Bring your super soakers to the starting line. Um, we really have created so fun, a really together. great event. A balloon blast off at the starting yeah. line. We're actually giving people at Packet Pickup balloons, and they have to bring them filled with water and drop them in the zone, the starting line zone. And we blast off as you go start, and we're going to corral everyone. It's going to be great. Yeah, you guys had so much fun putting that together. Was there just a night where you were in your room just thinking about it? Like, yeah, yes, I'm like, and what? Then, and then the water <laughs> I wanted every zone night. to be different, so <laughs> I did rack my brain to, to be creative and make it fun for families, kids, your neighbors, your coworkers, anyone. Yeah. Um, we've okay. sold almost 1,500 tickets already, wow. and we're still going. And being a brand new company, we're pretty happy with that. It's good. Okay, so everybody check out downtownrun.com, and of course we have the tickets up on Ticket Cake also. So thank you for coming to talk to us. Yeah, thanks Appreciate for it. being my ticket. Yeah, people. I, I love you. <laughs> I can't wait for it. Cannot wait for it. Thanks. So we're lucky enough to have Jen Toller here, and she's from the Stitch Factory, and this is something I'm pretty excited about. It's the Stitch Factory Speaker Series, mm -hmm. and I love the name, by the way, Behind the Seams. I yeah. see what you did there. Oh, right. <laughs> so tell, tell right, us about that. Yeah, so um, it's something that we host the third week of every month. So there's different curated weeks every uh, week of the month, and ours is the fashion-focused one. So we reach out to a bunch of fashion innovators out throughout the country or in the states and stuff like that to come out and emerge themselves in our community. So um, if that's with our design community that we have currently at Stitch Factory, um, then meeting people through different collisions through downtown. Um, but Wednesday through Saturday, they're here. So we have um, this Thursday. So it's the 14th through the 16th of August. On Thursday, we have a bunch of great speakers talking. And then on Friday, our keynote speaker um, is talking, and he's the founder and CEO of Hudson, Peter oh, Kim. Yeah, so we're 
we're really excited to have him out. So, um, and then we'll have a lot of opportunities to do like mixers, mingles, hang out at Stitch Factory, um, and then also get them out um, into the community with everyone else. This is yeah. very cool. I'm really excited about the launch of this. And yeah. I'm sure you'll get the most amazing guests keep coming in oh, constantly. Yeah, it's been phenomenal, the people that we've been able to have come out so far and then keep coming and reaching out. And um, it looks great with what we have in plan in, in the future, too. So, Fantastic. Yeah. So how yeah. can people register for this? Um, well, we're on Ticket, ta ticket Cake. <laughs> <laughs> so you can go to the site, uh, it's at .com, um, and then also register, go through there to see who's talking and to sign up for mentor hours and also for the different events at the Learning Village. Um, and I'll take you to Ticket cake so fantastic yeah Thank you. yeah of course yeah. Yeah. i'm excited do the mentoring program yeah oh my gosh so absolutely yeah, yeah. So. dan thank you for fixing my shorts too oh yeah that's yeah. right I, I didn't like shorts that you could turn inside out and i got a key stuck in the middle like went through my wall <laughs> pocket and i took it down there and the, the team of experts their team yes. of experts took it apart and got my key, put my pocket got the back key in out. yeah it was a crisis but we fixed it so it was a crisis <laughs> couldn't check my mail for two days oh, it was terrible no good all right well thank you very much yeah thank you yeah out, thanks so. for having us out yeah, so thank, thank you. you yeah, yeah. <laughs>
uh, what I'll call a more formal meetup where there's three presentations uh, and then a, a hack night, which is, it's, it's all very structured. We've learned that structured meetups tend to have better turnouts. Um, so if you're interested in test-driven development, there's a project side led by some great guys, uh, Alex and Brian right now. Um, and then there's a classroom side at hack night led by, by Jeremy. Um, so we're beginner friendly, come and learn, you know, figure out, you know, what's going on. It's really meetups in my mind are a great place for people to exchange information, connect in person, right? There's a lot of places to connect with the developers online, online excuse me. Um, but in person, it's really important. And so there's, you know, six presentations that are prepared by local developers every month, and it's really great stuff. So I encourage anybody to come out. LVRUG.org is our website. It's easy to remember. Um, stands for Las Vegas Ruby User Group. <laughs> we go by Las Vegas Ruby Group. Great. Right. Yeah. Well, you should be really proud of what you're doing Thank because you. it is like I, I've he heard multiple people talk about how professionally run it is. It's it's just we've just been very fortunate with the members that have joined who understand community and giving back and just that cycle of getting value and giving value back. So. Well, thank you for giving value back yeah, to absolutely. the downtown community. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Doing thanks. a great job. And thanks for the invite to come. Dylan. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. So. All right. Well, thank That's you guys for coming out. penguins by these are blackfoot penguins and he said that no refrigeration is necessary for them okay, so they do like the warm climate um, and the reason we have them here is because we're starting to talk about first friday coming up and the next first friday is actually called antarctica get in art for the art thing yeah i thought it was pretty clever too it took me a couple times to get it but once i did loved it, loved it. so make sure everybody checks that out to um, introduce you guys to somebody who i've known for a couple years now and is very much one of my favorite people in Silicon Valley. She is the founder of Zivity, a social networking site for creators and fans of tasteful glamour photography. She is also a prolific angel investor, board member, and advisor with many notable companies. Her investments include Uber, SpaceX, Facebook, Zappos, and of course DuckDuckGo for you people who are avoiding the NSA. <laughs> and uh, she is currently a contributing writer for TechCrunch, but most importantly, she is a big supporter of the World Juggling Federation. Unfortunately, after I got these, I found out she doesn't actually juggle. She just supports. Never but support. <laughs> that's good. That's good. But we have these here if anyone else can juggle after. Um, so please put your hands together for Cyan Bannister. All right. Well, first off, I'm glad you came out. You know, you know that time we pitched uh, Ticket Kick a few years ago to you. That was the. Yeah, I hope you don't, because that's actually the very first time we pitched, and that was that was uh, our first time figuring out how Silicon Valley works. So we had a lot of work to do, but you know, it's still going from there to here has been a big change for us personally. And I wanted to start just the conversation by talking about that. I mean, what is it like? I mean, how many companies have you seen go from just ideas, especially people that aren't on their second business, into flourishing companies, and you can see them build a career? Like, is that still? Well, you, you see it, many that grow into flourishing companies and many that fail, obviously. Right. Um, and that's the sad part about um, you know investing in startups. But a lot of them do succeed, and it's really wonderful to see you know the the growth stages along the way and what they become, like Ticket Cake. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's had a lot of growing to do, but it's that's a cool <laughs> it's cool to see it happening. Um, so tell me, what are some of the uh, stories personally where you've invested in companies and they've been able to kind of you know exceed your dreams and keep going? Well, many of them exceed my dreams, um, you know, and I'm always surprised by uh, what people come up with. And some people, you know, they come and they pitch us on ideas, and we usually invest sometimes in people. It's, I'm a little distracted by the penguins. But. No, that's what I did. That's the point of it, yeah. <laughs> um, and sometimes companies actually morph into something entirely different than what you ever imagined what they would have been in the beginning. Um, you know, for example, my husband invested in PayPal, and PayPal started out as a beaming payment system over phones and then turned into some, a way to oh, send right, payments yeah. over email. 
now, and you wouldn't have expected yeah, that. Because the pivots are so unpredictable. Yes, right? they really are. And so, you know, right. the, the mark of a good entrepreneur is to figure out, you know, the right market fit for their product. And sometimes it's completely different than what they start out with. Yeah, you start with the Penguin, Penguin Social Network, you end up with Facebook. Like, who yeah, knows? Exactly. It happens. <laughs> okay, so tell me about, uh, what do you think about the community so far? This is the second time I've known you've been out here in the last year or so. How do you think about the way it's growing and what's your opinion of uh, yeah. what it's going to become? So, um, this is my second tour and my second time out here. And in that year period, so many things have changed and flourished. And um, it's always so great to see, you know, the people in the building and, you know, what's going right. on in the street, you know, going to the coffee shop and seeing all the activity there. And, uh, you know, now actually seeing the, the plans for the building um, was really, really exciting for the Zappos building. Yeah. So that I didn't really see last year. And so every time I come back, there's more right, progress. Right, more and more. Yeah. Hey, so you believe in this whole place. And it makes me you jealous. Like I really want to live here. Oh, well, you come visit. You know what I mean? You're not very come far. Visit. You guys want to say and move here? <laughs> yeah. Your second home, you know. You're, you're a short airplane array away, so. That's all right, so you, so you like all this collision stuff. You believe in kind of this power of bringing people together? I collided with these penguins. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is how you get all your great ideas. So I collided with them in the elevator and in Tony's apartment, and so I, I truly believe in collision now. I mean, I didn't expect to see penguins. So someone, someone will wake up surrounded by beer cans and penguins and look at their collision too? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I'm not referring to me, by the way. Um, okay, so tell me about this very cool nonprofit that you're starting to put your name behind and tell me what that's all about. Yeah, this is a project I'm actually very excited about. I'm used to investing in and advising for profit entities, and so um, this is my first journey into the nonprofit world. And um, my, I'm a co founder, I'm with three other people, and we're building what we like to call the Mythbusters of popular media. And so we're trying to build the Snopes for um, documentaries, uh, films, news stories, so that parents, people, educators can come and look at the site and try to figure out, you know, it's, it's really hard to figure out what facts are because, you know, the truth oh, yeah. is very subjective in a lot of cases. Right. Um, but to create a discussion around what the truth might be about a particular instance or, you know, thing that people are writing about or talking about. Oh, I see. So, so, so the point, um, uh, tell me if I get this wrong, but basically if you're really successful with this company, it'll be about kind of filtering out the truth <laughs> in articles for people. So you kind of think right. of it more as a, I mean, it's obviously social good, but also more of just a trusted source for... Yeah, we want to be a trusted source that people yeah. go to after they see a movie. So if you go and see a movie, maybe it's even a science fiction, you know, completely made up movie like Jurassic Park or something like that. And it's you can... not real. <laughs> <laughs> I can't it's believe that. It's not real. <laughs> um, or you know, you, what, it was Independence Day where they hacked the spaceship, yeah. you know, with the laptop. Um, <laughs> can do anything here. Also not real, but um, <laughs> you know, some of those will actually be really fun to break down. And we're actually um, building probably the biggest network of experts, hopefully, that has ever existed of scientists, technologists, historians. Um, you know, that will actually critique a lot of these things, so that it will come from an expert source. And those okay. are where our writers are going to be. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, because I, I, you know, I was in the newest Wired magazine. They had an article that was like talking about like how much it would really cost to be Iron Man and Batman, and that takes a lot of research, which most people just don't have the energy to do. And it nobody, costs yeah, trillions of dollars to right. be Iron Man. <laughs> it does. Yes, <laughs> the was, yeah, two or three trillion. But Batman's only like eight hundred million. Only. So yeah, if you just want that bat suit and stuff, that's who. If you go into the superhero thing on the side, that's mm -hmm. that's your best choice. Okay, so uh, let's talk about your personal investment uh, pipeline because um, without the big names being named, like well, a lot of our audience is entrepreneurs and they're kind of curious about you know which idea of theirs they should really put all their energy into. Like, what kind of companies are you starting to invest in, and what do you think sort of on the forefront? What I'm really passionate about are companies that help people be entrepreneurial within their own time frame. So things like Uber, Postmates, um, anything that allows someone to use you know a smartphone or the internet to make a living. Um, I also really like companies and I'm looking for companies where people can do things like assemble products from home, um, answer telephone calls and do customer service from home. And this way it gives people the freedom to be with their families or if you have a disability, um, oh, yeah. you know, or you know, you don't like going to a nine to five office. Hi there. <laughs> yeah, you can <can't> sneeze them. <laughs> a nine to five office environment that you have many different avenues of making a living. I, I do feel that a lot of people, especially in this country where there's a lot of joblessness going on, that there's a lot of things that entrepreneurs can do to solve that. And um, you know, like for example, 
a lot of people can drive or, or ride a bicycle and they don't think of that as a skill, but that's actually a skill that can make you a living. And so I'm looking for entrepreneurs to help solve joblessness oh, by okay. creating marketplaces for people to connect goods and services to the customers that want them. Yeah, we had a whole, we had a whole podcast that was devoted just to how you can like live on your own and make money by like sharing your car and like doing yeah. little things. And yeah, it definitely seems like it could be like an entire vertical in itself. Just Maybe we all just kind of do that. Uh, what, so what about 3D printing? Is that kind of like on the radar as far as like people at home like making products, kind of challenging Amazon or big distributors or? Yeah, you know, there's a company that my husband just recently sent me that I'm really excited about. It's not 3D printing, but uh, okay. where people knit products at home. And so they get sent these patterns and then they knit the products. Oh, that's cool. And um, and then people buy them off the website. Oh yeah, my and, grandma signed up like that. Yeah, so this, yeah. So this will actually put grandmas, you know, back into the workforce <laughs> and they can create really cool products. And, and you know, so I think that's a really amazing Amazing um, company. Also, it's it allows people to make products that are made in the USA or made in Iceland or made wherever. So yeah. you have sort of an affinity for that. You know, that's really cool. Um, so I think 3D printers also is um, an uncharted territory where people are going to be able to make some really cool products. And we're already seeing where people are submitting designs, and there's these really cool sharing sites where people share ideas and people buy those ideas. And so there's really cool marketplaces that are starting to exist around that. And so I think that's an exciting area too. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, let me know if you ever invest in a company that does funeral potatoes. Because my grandma is killer. She can make those all day. Do you know what that is? No. Is that a Culture is like, right now, but it's just, it's like a cheesy potato. I don't know, grandma makes it. Like, it's, it's like a cheesy potato thing. You can get the recipe. Yeah, okay, I will send you the recipe. I'll have my grandma email it to you. That'll be good. She might, she might get her on Twitter and she'll, she'll get you. Okay, so what are you guys talking about in the valley behind closed doors? Um, it's not like the real crazy stuff, but mostly in the sense of like, like you know, I, I mean, asteroid mining, biohacking, the hyperloop. Like, what's like what what's kind of the interesting things that you talk to your friends about? Well, I have a, I, I definitely have an interesting group of friends, um, and I'm very fortunate and lucky to have them. And I do think that one of the things we do like to talk about. Um, you know, space travel is one of them. Yeah. I have a lot of friends in the space industry who are interested in space. And it's funny that you should bring up mining asteroids. I have a, um, an investment in a company that's goal is to get to the moon and, and um, mine the moon. And also to bring um, commercial payloads up to the moon, like, you know, telescopes and things like that. As well as, you know, there's, if you think about the commercial applications, when I first thought about it, I was like, hmm, I mean, what would you want on the moon? But there's actually a lot of interesting <laughs> lot of use cases where people metals. would want things up there. And there's special, you know, materials yeah. that you would want to bring back. Um, and and you can imagine people like, will probably want to be buried there and you know that sort of thing. Think, speaking of mor morbidity. No, funeral potatoes are totally different. Totally different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, but I got, but I got to admit that they just, to the moon. You, did, you did just rock my brain. That would be a good place for a great. But we, we also talk a lot about, you know, just, um, you know, big ideas and how to solve them and, you know, how, what companies are really interesting and what we should be looking into and, and things like that. About artificial intelligence? you think it's on its way pretty soon? I don't think it's anytime soon, no. I, um, soon? Okay. I think we're so far, we haven't even been able to figure out how to make sites like Google work well. So right. I think artificial intelligence is a long ways out, okay. but um, I am excited about it and I think, you know, some aspects of it will happen in my lifetime, but it's going to be much more exciting for our children. Okay, so um, tell me about juggling. Let's just have fun. Like, how did you get involved with this yeah, seemingly strange so and out of place? I have an, an affinity and love for clowns and jugglers. And um, I, you know, when I'm not hanging out with entrepreneurs, I like to hang out with magicians and jugglers and clowns. And they're really interesting people, and they're so different than you know who I am. Yeah, yeah. And they make me happy. And so, um, also, I'm the least coordinated person you've probably ever met. <laughs> and so, I'm very jealous of people no. that can do things like circus acts and juggling and things like that. And so, um, you know, I there's the World Juggling Federation. One right. of the first DEF CON. So I'm actually here for DEF CON, oh. and I've been coming for 18 years. Um, so it's kind of like my Burning Man. I come back here. Awesome, there's a badge in the audience. Yeah. Um, I come back here to meet with friends and to regroup with people I love. And, um, you know, I one of the years that I was here, another random event, kind of like showing up in penguins, but not as cool, um, was I ended up at the World Juggling Federation, and um, I fell in love with um, what Jason Garfield is trying to do. And he's trying to make it a popular sport that is, you know, aired on ESPN that people will love and it's and make it competitive. Uh, I love it. And I fell in love, and I was just like, wow. And so, um, one of the things I started talking to him about was I wanted to see more female jugglers. 
And uh, specifically, I want to see a lot of jugglers. There's a lot of jugglers who are really, really good overseas, and they have a very difficult time getting to the competitions. And so I started sponsoring air travel and hotels oh, that's um, cool. so that yeah, these yeah. women could get here and compete. Kind of build a career out of it. And, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's really cool. I yeah, I can't. I mean, I, I was practicing all morning, and I just I can barely do anything with these things. And I, th I think the World Juggling Federation. I know there's a lot of things going on tomorrow night, and there's a lot of competitions. There's the uh, the art first Fridays and all of that sort of stuff. Fire juggling. Um, but I know that there's some sort of juggling thing going on tomorrow. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's always something fun like that happening around here. Okay, so let's talk about uh, just ways people can contact you. I'm sure you have your Twitter account, which is a good thing, but especially or especially your new. Um, uh, nonprofit. Oh yeah. Or how so, can, what can people go to help I'm out? I'm looking for experts, and then you know, an expert could be um, something you can't even imagine. So when I go to conferences, I have people who come up to me and they say, "I hate the way satellites are portrayed in movies, and I want to stop seeing like red beams coming out of satellites." And that's that's how they like you know portray that information is passed along. And you know, there's people that have come out of the woodwork with all sorts of different things and disciplines that they're yeah. really excited about. So if you're an expert about bicycling or you're, you know, whatever your thing is that you think that you know, the news Yeah, when you wrong. watch the movie, you're like, yeah, oh, when you watch the news, like yeah. if you're a doctor or whatever it is, and you're just like, I cannot stand the way that they talk about this, you know, because I really think it's doing a disservice to humanity, please contact us. Um, and my email address is cyan at signalmedia, signalmedia.org. Okay, uh, thank you for coming out and talking to us. We really appreciate thank it. I'm so glad you're around. So. Tag.